Hello, welcome. This video is going to discuss a case where a deciduous tooth, a lower right uh, E, was grossly decayed. And when we looked further into the case, we realized that the tooth didn't have a permanent successor. So it was really, really important today that we made sure that the tooth, uh, the, all the decay was removed and it was restored properly. And, you know, so, so it's going to last a long time. So if you look at the uh, bite wing on the right hand side, you can see clearly that the lower right four is present, but the lower right five is missing. There's a bit of a suspicion there to think to yourself, well, is there a permanent successor or not? Rightly or wrongly, I took an OPG. Again, people would say this is probably a little bit of an overkill, but I think um, if I've got a suspicion there's a missing tooth, there is also a suspicion that there are missing teeth elsewhere and if you look at the OPG here you can see that the lower five is missing and the tooth has got a significant decay so as mentioned before we've got to make sure that whatever filling we put in here needs to be good solid and it's gonna last a long time I'll put a caveat to that because what I did say to mum and dad was that this person needs orthodontic treatment as well. So what I will be doing is I will be writing a letter to the orthodontist just saying this tooth um, is not in the best of shape, but um, you know, is, is it within the sort of plan of the orthodontic treatment to keep this tooth or to remove it? And that's just a, um, a decision that they will make. So, um, Regardless, I'm going to put something in there just in case the tooth is required. So to start off the case here, what I'm doing here is I am um, um, isolating the tooth. It's really, really important to isolate. And I've got one of these strange um, clamps here. And, and off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you what this clamp is. What I'll do is I'll put it underneath what it's called. And what it does is it, um, it clamps the tooth behind it, but it also it extends anteriorly so you can um, you can isolate multiple teeth in front of the one that you're doing. This particular um, clamp is really, really good because the, 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 the mouth is very small. So if you were just to clamp one tooth, there wouldn't really be a lot of space for the suction and the, uh, the, the drill to get in there. So it's nice to make a bit more space. Here I am just um, looking at the tooth and I am very, very, very gingerly now just removing um, it's a, a, a little bit of temporary filling material that was there and just assessing how much decay is in this tooth because the very very last thing that I want to do is I want to expose the pulp okay so when we are um, drilling this tooth we're being very 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 careful so with the with the fast hand piece I am just removing the undermined enamel um, I don't want to take too much enamel away but I, but I, but I, but I want to take enough that if um, the, 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 if, if it is undermined, it's not going to break away, you see. So, we've removed most of the enamel that's going to be removed, and now I'm going to use a, uh, a slow hand piece with a, I think that's either a size 6 or a size 8 rose head burr. And <clears throat> my, um, the, the way I'm doing this is I am going around the edges of the cavity. I don't want to um, put the rose head exactly where the pulp might be. So I'm just being, being really, really, really careful. And if needs be, um, I'm gonna check the base of the cavity for decay. And if I have to leave decay above the pulp, I will do. And again, that's a conversation to have with the parents. So here, what I'm doing is I'm removing more decay around the edge of the cavity, being super, super careful. And it's hard for me to show you here, but um, I'm having a little scratch and I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, I think there is decay there still at the base of this cavity. And I'm just gonna be very, very, very careful with the rose head just to um, remove some of the, more of the decay, okay? This is easier with a microscope. If you were doing this with a pair of loops or indeed with the Mark One eyeball, you, you'll really, really risk exposing the pulp here. So you've got to be super, super careful. And what you can't see here is I'm being very, very gentle pushing down with the, the drill. And I'm just expecting the cavity. And actually in this case, I managed to remove all of the decay, which was, which was fantastic. So what I'm now using is I'm using a bioceramic. I'm actually using biodentin, although I've been known to use quite a few different um, 
liners in this case. And the thing about bidentin is it is really, really nice for the pulp and it also creates a, um, a fantastic chemical bond with the dentin itself. So it's a great lining um, material and it's less likely to leak than if you would just put a, a, just a normal restoration in there. The, the thing about bidentin, it's, it's really, really technique sensitive and you've got to be super, super careful. And what I've mentioned in a lot of my other videos is you want to put it in, dampen it down a little bit, maybe add a little bit more here, but don't muck around with it too much because if you muck around with it too much, the bidentin will just pull away from the cavity and it's super, super annoying. So you just put it in, try and dampen it down a little bit. Don't muck around with it too much and just, just walk away, just walk away. So here I'm just very, very gently. I couldn't obviously see the pulp um, in this cavity, but a lot of times you can see the pulp sort of shining through the dentin and that's where you're gonna wanna put the, uh, the, the bioceramic, that's where you're gonna put the biodentin. So it's not obvious here what I'm doing is I'm actually blowing a little bit of water very, very gently on into the cavity. And actually the bioceramic and the water makes it set quicker. Okay, but you don't want to put it under water like as a goldfish, but you want to put, make it a little bit moist. And then, essentially, you just wait 15 minutes for it to set. So I've sped it up here. Um, I'm just waiting, waiting, and waiting for a good old 15 minutes. And then when the 15 minutes is up, you just check the cavity and you give it a very, very gentle prod just to see if it's nice and set and then we are ready to uh, put a, a, a GIC over the top. Here I'm using Vitribon, this is a, a, G, a light cure GIC, so I'm putting GIC over the bioceramic and I'm gonna set it, and then I, I'm gonna etch and bond uh, the cavity, and I'm using a selective etching technique here where I um, place the etch just slightly around the cavity, and then some people like to do this, some people don't, I like to give it a good old brush into the cavity itself, and then wash it away, and then I'm using a bit of flow. Uh, bond, of course, first, and then a little bit of flow. Uh, the bond I'm using here is something called eye bond, and then a little bit of flow over the top. So this uh, filling's got a, quite a lot of layers, um, but you know, rest assured, this is this is taking time to make sure this tooth is um, going to last, uh, you know, longer than say you just put a simple GI in there. And finish result. It's really, really nice. Dad was happy, patient was happy, and overall, a really, really nice result. And listen, if you really, really like these videos, I really, really like making them, and um, please like, and more importantly, subscribe to my channel. And if you have any comments or any criticisms today, you wanna to discuss anything, uh, put all your questions in the comments, and I always comment back, okay? Thanks for watching, and uh, have a nice day.